Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have the honor to be before our God, to be able to consider his path. Lord Jesus, forgive us for the many times we are not loving. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, have, help us to have faith in you and your presence and word and sacrament. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And with the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord, teach us how to have faith and love in the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh Lord, may your grace at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who am telling you that if you have yourselves circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you. Once again, I declare to every man who has himself circumcised that he is bound to observe the entire law. You are separated from Christ, you who are trying to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm response is, Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord your salvation according to your promise. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord, and I will keep your laws continually forever and ever. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. And I will walk at liberty, because I seek your precepts. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. And I will delight in your commands, which I love. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. And I will lift up my hands to your commands and meditate on your statutes. Let your mercy come to me, O Lord. According to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisee, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, do not the maker of the outside also make the inside? That as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Pope Francis has put out a new encyclical, well worth reading. Um, it tries to get at the amount of divisions happening in local communities. And we think all those divisions just happen in our parish, or they just happen in Dodge County, or they just happen in Wisconsin. From the Pope's perspective, he sees these divisions happening around the world. You know, a lot of folks are really kind of at each other. I mean, the tensions in Europe, the tensions in South America, the tensions in Central America, North America, he sees this general theme of all these tensions, and he's trying to ascertain from where are they coming. And a lot of times where they come from is a selfishness. You know, that we want more than our share. We don't want to collaborate in, about agency. Rather, we want to get what we can get and to be able to not let the other person fend for themselves. This is kind of one of the challenges of, of bullying in school, let's say, that you know, bullying in school becomes a multi-generational problem because if a parent had themselves been bullied, they'd rather see their child be on the bullying side of the bullying, not on the getting bullied side. And so more and more parents are teaching their child to be more assertive to the point of being aggressive. And so that's one piece of it. But part of it is, you know, that's what we keep being told when we go to vote. We should go vote for our own personal self-interest. What's your self-interest? And vote for that. That, too, just reinforces the selfishness. And part of it is simply not connecting to Jesus Christ. You know, less and less people going to church adds up after a while. Because people aren't altruistic just on their if we're not getting challenged by this gospel and by all the gospels to get outside of ourselves and to care for other people, it's real possible for us to, just as fast, become pretty self-centered. And so religion becomes a combination of doing a bunch of exterior things. Yeah, check off the box, I got baptized. Check off the box, I got the other sacraments. You know, kind of check off the essential, minimal boxes. Therefore, we get this kind of religious minimalism going on. But inside, we fill with plunder that we want to grab as much for ourselves as humanly possible. And that's, I think, what the Pope is analyzing. That's what Jesus has here in the Gospel. He could see it in his time already. That the religious people of their time, their religion was kind of skin deep. It was only on the shadow, on the edge. It wasn't in their heart that they really had a great connection to God, to find out how generous God is, and then felt that we should imitate God in his generosity. And so um, we have that Paul saying the exact same thing in the first reading. You know, worried about the exterior things, like whether you should be circumcised or not. Paul says, who cares about that? It's about having faith, and this is the ultimate mission statement for a church, by the way, Faith working through love. That's ultimately what we need to be about. And so he wants to, as we come into this Eucharist, to this incredible generosity, this incredible love pouring out from the Last Supper, echoing through the centuries to us here, for us as we come to receive this generosity and the selflessness of Jesus Christ, 
allow ourselves to find ourselves being transformed by it, letting go of our own sense to have to gather things to ourselves or to be in control all the time, but allow ourselves to be challenged by Jesus Christ, who believes it is all about having faith, which goes and, and works in the world through love. Let us now stand to offer our prayers to the Lord. Let us pray for our world today, um, especially our continued discernment over Supreme Court justice, that we will have to find a path for love for everybody from the unborn all the way through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our church, that we will be a community known for how much we love and take care of each other. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the homebound, for which we have so much concern, that we will find ways to reach out to them and care for them in a safe manner during COVID. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the construction project up at the St. Vincent de Paul store, that that will be safe and effective and budget, so that we can continue to live out the mission of caring for the poor on such a grand scale. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for the special intention for this Mass of the years of the month. So we pray for all those who have died and pray for all the funerals that are coming up within our com community, including Norbert Mallet, whose funeral is tomorrow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you give us so many gifts. Help us to understand the many ways that we, you answer our prayer with generosity, that we can live a life filled with generosity. But we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sharing our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, so that rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we would live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from the Father. Therefore, O oh Lord, may the same Holy Spirit sanctify these offerings, that they would become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, he showed the depth of his love. While they were at supper, he took bread, he blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks. And gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, remember Christ's death, his descent to the realm of the dead, we proclaim his resurrection and ascension, and as we wait his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the acceptable sacrifice which brings salvation to the Look upon the sacrifice which you've given to your church and grant your loving kindness to all of us who will partake of this bread and this chalice to be gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit to truly become a living sacrifice and praise of the Father. Therefore, Lord, remember those for whom we offer the sacrifice, especially your servant Francis our Pope and Jerome our Bishop, all the clergy and all who take part in this offering and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith has known to you alone. To all of us, your children, grant that we too would enter into a heavenly inheritance with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, and all the apostles and saints, including Catherine Drexel, and who, as well as the whole of creation, free from the corruption of sin and death, May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Amen. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happier all of us who are called the disciples of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my time. But only say the word, and my soul shall be Suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Pray for us. 
ask your majesty most humbly that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 